Elaine, thank you so much for, for being the first one to go through <laughs> um, our experience. How much fun did you have? I had a great time. You know, I, I expected it to be fun, but it, it actually far exceeded my expectations. It was wonderful. I had a great time, and I'll tell you, I would do it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would too. I was a little unsure of what to expect, but yeah. that's okay because we will seize the day. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, I, I, you, when we first went into it, I was a little bit apprehensive because I didn't know what to expect, but the, the staff here and uh, the crew made us feel so comfortable and just being with the dolphin is wonderful. It's yeah. just a sweet, beautiful animal. <laughs> it is, and you know, we talk about you know, the importance of seizing the day and, and the reason for uh, this entire series is um, not just about cancer, not just about cancer survivors, but it's for everyone to remember that life is a, a precious gift and we have to live every day to the fullest. Um, what are some of the other things that uh, since you've um, come out of your treatment mm -hmm. you've wanted to do, you finally had time for? Well some of the things are just things that are fun things that I've put off for many, many years that I used to want to do or, I, or I've done and had to put aside. I love music. I play the piano. I take a wonderful painting class every week and I've met terrific people through that. I do yoga several times a week and, you know, those are just things that make wonderful things for me to do every day and I've really enjoyed them. That's great. I'll talk a little bit about um, your diagnosis. When were you diagnosed? I was diagnosed in April of 2010, and I was diagnosed at stage 3C. Uh, it was ovarian cancer, and um, following surgery, I went into chemotherapy for six months, eight treatments. And um, that was, I finished that last fall, and I'm in remission, and I'm a survivor, and that feels really good. <laughs> <laughs> so great. And, and when you went through treatment, I know every cancer patient's treatment is different because say, even if you have the same cancer as someone else, sure. the way you're dealing with it, what stage it's caught at, how, how if it's spread, how far, all of those things are a factor. Absolutely. Um, in your treatment, uh, was there a defining moment when you thought, okay, I can get through this? You know, I think there was. It was interesting because at the very beginning, you, you're just like you're at the bottom of the hill looking up and you think, I can do this, I can make it, and you've got to get over the top. About midway through, there is a moment, it was for me, where I thought, wow, I'm halfway there, but I'm only halfway there. Mm -hmm. And it, I had to take a deep breath and realize I've made it this far, I've got the strength to make it the rest of the way. So for me, the defining moment was when I passed that midway point and I knew I was on I was, I was on the downside or maybe the <laughs> upside, really. Yes, yeah. exactly. How important was support? Now you talk about um, your three children who are spread across the United States, yes, uh, Dallas, yeah. Portland, Boston. Yes. So, you know, being able to, to talk to them at least, I know they each made, uh, were able to come see you, which yes. was fantastic. But how important was that, that family support also with your, you have six siblings here yes, in, uh, yes, in the Southeast. <laughs> the support is so important. Um, uh, what I realized is that you know cancer is a scary thing we all know that but it's scary for everybody and I think your your family members your your siblings your children they in their own way have to learn how to put things into perspective and so what I found with my family is they did that they did it very easily for me they were always there if it wasn't uh, in person it was via email or by mm -hmm. telephone uh, the children called all the time uh, my husband set up a blog where he gave everybody information on a regular basis and we developed a sort of a, a unique kind of closeness with one another where we could share those things. And I'll tell you something else that was nice about it is um, they, they never lost their sense of humor about it <laughs> and they never let me lose my sense of humor. So it was so important for me during that time to have that. Well, and you talk about your husband and I know for me it's it's amazing. I, I just, I can't believe sometimes looking back what my husband went through. I mean, he's got his own job he's got to focus on, but he made sure that our son had his diapers changed right. and he had to lift him up for me because I couldn't do that. Um, you know, running the errands, doing the grocery shopping, sure. doing all those things that, you know, triple, quadruple his load, but he did it with a smile and kept me laughing. And um, you talk about how important your husband was to oh, your success. You know, the, the 
descriptor that I use to everybody, mm -hmm. and I think sometimes my husband is a little abashed when I say this, but mm -hmm. he was magnificent <laughs> from the very beginning. And while our children were not little, uh, I know that he travels a lot in his job, and every time I had a treatment, he would put these travel plans or even just the meeting times aside so that he could be with me during those times that are a little bit rougher than the other times. Mm -hmm. He also was probably, he was my biggest fan, he was my biggest supporter. Mm -hmm. um, he was always there to help me uh, understand what was going on. And to, I think the, the, one of the most important things is that he constantly reminded me of where I'd been and how much I'd been through, and that I was as strong as I was, and I, I just can't imagine how I would have made it without him. He's That's been so wonderful, sweet. and he still is. <laughs> oh, he's such a sweetie. Um, you've been through treatment yes. now. Uh, one thing that was difficult for me was getting through my treatment. I had that nine-week goal. Okay, I've got my game plan. I can wait, make it to those sure. nine weeks. Um, and then afterwards, it wasn't over. It was kind of this right. constant roller coaster ride, the next test, the next sure. PET scan, MRI, CAT scan, and kind of constantly being observed. How have you dealt with that? Well, I, there, you're right. There are times when you recognize it when it's over and uh, that there's a sort of a so what factor. Yeah. What happens now and what can I expect to happen? And I think for me, it's that I just continue looking forward. I try not to look back. I say all the time, I think about chemotherapy, and that's history, and I've been through it. And then I think the other thing is that no matter what happens, I recognize now I have a strength I absolutely never knew I had. And so whatever the future brings, and I'm hoping it's all good things, but I know that I can deal with it. I, I know that I'll be fine. So I'm just taking every day, one day at a time. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, there is one thing that you mentioned to me um, before uh, in, in talking. Um, it was funny. I was having dinner with my son the other night, and um, <laughs> and he took his plate of spaghetti and he decided to wear it as a hat on his head. <laughs> and we're out, and you know, it struck me at that moment that I had no urge to get upset. It, he, here is this two-year-old love of my life and he's happy and he's healthy and he's smiling and having fun and yeah he's messy he's a big old mess right. but I, I can give him a bath and sure. it's going to be okay and does it matter it doesn't matter and I, I, you put it um, so wonderfully you said you, you know after your your cancer diagnosis after your treatment you realized um, there are certain things in life that are important and, and others that aren't and those become crystal clear. Yes, that's exactly right. One of the things that I discovered is how easy, how incredibly easy it is for me today to make choices about my life because the things that are important I recognize and the things that are not important don't matter. And uh, I think the, the term I use is blindingly clear to me. <laughs> so when in the past I think I would worry about certain things and do I want to do this and should I do that and there was always the what if, should I, could I. And now it's just not so difficult. It's so simple to recognize uh, what on a day-to-day -day basis the little things and even long-term what really matters. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, you're I welcome. appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me do this. Absolutely. <laughs> I loved it.